On October 23, 1944, in Upland, California, John Bowler was born. Just two years later, the Bowler family moved to McMinnville and started a propane gas company that's still in business today. At an early age, John showed that he had the competitive drive and athleticism that would make him a very successful player. At the high school level, he achieved three letters in football and basketball and four in track. He was a starter for each sport every year of his career, which is rare since he played quarterback in football and forward in basketball. But John had the size, skill, and competitiveness to help the Grizzlies to winning records in both of those sports in his sophomore campaign. That track season also went well for John as he established himself as the team's top competitor in three events, the long jump, low hurdles, and his best event, high hurdles. In his junior football season, John started for the first three games of the year at quarterback. He performed well, but the team struggled, losing two and tying one. That's when coach Don Maybe decided to change things up by moving John to the running back spot due to his overall size, strength, and speed. Well, he was a very good quarterback just because of his athletic ability. But the situation we were in was that we, he, when he was the quarterback, we also had to have him run the ball as much as possible on a sweep, roll out, right or left. And we just felt that we could do the same uh, if Terry Durham was a quarterback. And Terry could probably throw the ball as well at that time as a sophomore, as well as John, or get the job done on short passes. And yet we could get uh, John the ball more as a running back. It proved to be a good decision, and the Bears won five of their last six games to end the season, with Bowler achieving all-league honorable mention and the team MVP award for junior. John's success continued into that basketball season as he led the team to a winning record. He finished the season as the Bears' leader in almost every statistical category, including field goal percentage, free throws made and attempted, and averaged a double-double in points and rebounds. These accomplishments earned John all-league second-team honors. Bowler ended an already great year with another excellent track season as he swept the competition, earning the district championship in all three of his events and qualifying for the state meet. John went on to take fifth at the state competition in the low hurdles, signifying his reputation as one of the very best three-sport athletes at McMinnville High School in just his junior year. John only got better in his senior football season as he was far and away the team's leading rusher and the state's scoring champion. The Grizzlies shut out their first three opponents while on their way to a seven-win and two-loss season and taking second in league. They handed first place Tillamook their only loss of the season in a 20-0 route. After his first full season at running back, John was recognized for his outstanding high school football career with several awards such as All-League First Team, All-State Shrine Team, and an All-American Honorable Mention Selection. His career was capped off with an induction into the National Football Foundation's Portland Chapter Hall of Fame for being such an outstanding scholar-athlete. He probably uh, was as good as any football player in the state of Oregon that year. For our time, he was a, really a kind of a horse, you know, he was a big kid, muscular, uh, could run fast. He raised his legs high when he ran and, and uh, he was hard to tackle. He was very difficult to tackle and uh, it's just like Jack Temple. Jack was so quick that uh, you had trouble tackling, whereas John was so strong and powerful, he would run through tackles. And maybe he would call the play, he'd just say, okay, now go in there, it's Buller over whoever <laughs> on the line. <laughs> And, and we would, that's the way we played a lot of our time. And we did pretty well. John was a powerful runner. He had the speed and he had the size. And uh, anybody describing John as just pure power. Plus he had the athletic agility too. So he was, he was a tremendous football player and a, a good basketball player. So a great three sport athlete. He was a good teammate. He's a good person. John is, he was then and, and he still is, you know, he's a, he's a great guy. In basketball, John's individual statistics continued to impress as he achieved all-league first-team status. However, this time Grizzly fans would be treated to one of the best teams Mack High has ever had, as the Bears won 16 of their 18 regular season games and captured the league title. The unranked Grizzlies earned a state playoff berth and were matched up in the opening round with the number one ranked and favored North Eugene Highlanders. Bowler only performed better under the pressure of his first playoff game as he grabbed 15 rebounds, helping the Grizzlies to a 63-60 upset. Even though the Bears would lose in the following day's game to the eventual state champion Grants Pass, they beat Malala in their third game which allowed them to play for fourth place. However, they would come up only five points short against South Salem in that game, which was still good for a seventh place Grizzly finish. After ending his high school basketball career on a very high note, John looked to finish out the year with another tremendous track season. That's just what he did as Bowler dominated the competition by once again winning the district championships in all three of his events. At the state meet, John placed in each of his events taking 6th in the long jump, 5th in the low hurdles, and 4th in the high hurdles. 
During that season, he set a McMinnville High School record for the high hurdles of 14.7 seconds. His greatness as a hurdler at Mech High has never been duplicated, since that is still to this day the best time in school history. After graduating from McMinnville High School as a National Honor Society member in 1962, John attended the University of Oregon on a full athletic scholarship for both football and track. He showed great promise as a standout running back on the freshman football team, and in track he participated in two events, the high and intermediate hurdles. Even as a freshman, Bowler consistently placed higher than any other member of the team, making him the best intermediate hurdler on the prestigious NCAA defending champion track and field team coached by legendary Bill Bowerman. In his sophomore football season, John was part of an excellent running back squad headlined by All-American Mel Renfro, who would later play 14 seasons in the NFL and make 10 Pro Bowl appearances before being selected in the NFL's Hall of Fame. The Ducks, quarterbacked by All-American Bob Barry and coached by Len Casanova, had a great season with eight wins and three losses, as well as a victory over SMU in the 1963 Sun Bowl. This was their first postseason triumph in 46 years. The year would only get better for John during the track season as he set a new school record at the conference championship meet in the intermediate hurdles with a time of 52.7 seconds. This qualified him to compete in the national meet where the men's track and field team took home the NCAA championship. After Mel Renfro's departure to the NFL before the 1964 football season, Bowler worked himself more into the rotation as a junior. John had some very good games and was usually the second or third leading rusher on a team that was ranked in the top 20 for almost the entire season. The Ducks won seven, lost two, and tied one, resulting in just barely missing a bowl game. In track, John performed even better than the year before as he improved his times in both events and again qualified for the national competition. Bowler helped the team win their second NCAA national championship in as many years. When quarterback Bob Berry was drafted to the NFL before John's senior football season, the team was in need of new leadership. Bowler stepped into the starting lineup for part of the season and was one of the team's leading rushers. Though the Ducks finished the season a game under 500, John had achieved a great football career that spanned from flag football in grade school to a bowl game victory at the University of Oregon. His senior track season was perhaps John's personal best as he again improved each of his times while on his way to a semifinal finish at the national meet. The team would come up shy of their third national championship in a row, but John finished his sports career as one of the 50 University of Oregon athletes to ever letter in both football and track, and he did it during a time when the university boasted some of the best teams they have ever had. Upon graduating from Oregon with a degree in business administration in June of 1966, John fulfilled his ROTC commitment by enlisting as a transportation officer in the Army. After spending a year in New York City becoming a captain, John was shipped to Vietnam in January 1968. Over the next year, Bowler served America proudly on the battlefield and upon his discharge in 1969 decided to travel the world. He spent the next six months exploring such places as Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, and a few other countries in the Far East. John ended his travels by moving to San Francisco to pursue his business endeavors where he spent the next five years building his career. During that time, John met his wife and they eventually moved back to McMinnville in 1975 to help run his father's propane business. Over the years, John has kept with athletics by participating in City League basketball, coaching new sports, and contributing to the U of O's athletic fund while successfully running the McMinnville Gas Company and living in the area with his wife and two sons.